Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Nicole. I'm Eli. And I'm Jason. And we're the Hulu Tour YouTube channel. And we thank you guys very, very much for joining us. It is a Shabbat, and as this song was playing, we had the dogs take off on us, and we have people spanking the dogs, trying to get them to be quiet. First and foremost, we will always apologize, first and foremost, for our 10 pit bulls, and they do speak the language of dog, and so they are kind of loud, and they do crazy stuff. We have never chained these dogs. We've never tied them up or anything so they exist with us and so it is a giant pack within a pack and we thank you guys very 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 much for joining us all of you guys out there are what we call family we have found more family in our torah keeping family than we have with blood relationships and we have more love within our group of people just our small little ecclesia that we have here than we have with our entire outside family and so it is amazing to see the love that Yah has bestowed upon us and the kind of world that he's trying to give us. And it is a Shabbat, everybody. How you guys doing? Good. good. Gade, good. how you doing? Good. Gade, Jade, how you good. doing? Eli? Good. Everyone? Good. Everyone out there? How's uh, 
Anyone in the chat room yet? We got okay, Lester, brother. Lester, how you doing, brother? Much love to you. Um, I know we talked to you a little bit here and there, but man, we, you're always on our mind. You are always, um, we're praying for you. We're worried about you. We always worry. And for those who are, <clears throat> if you guys need prayer requests at all, um, we are, we will gladly pray for you. Just kind of give us a direction of what you would need um, to be prayed for. And we will simply pray for you. And um, yeah, so what's going on in the chat room? All right. So we have Lester. We have the Grand. Hi, Grand. Grandma. Hi, Grandma. We have Mick Jones. He's in here. Hey, Mick's in here. Yep. Mick's our little buddy. He's he's from overseas, and Mick has been around for a long time on the other channel. Good to see you, brother. It is very, very good to see you. You are on our prayer request list. We definitely lift you up in prayer a lot. We hope you're doing well and hope you're finding a good part of your life and figuring things out for sure. We also have Rhiannon and Zachariah. Ah, Zach and Rhiannon. Hey, is those are super. It's so good to have a little family. We we have a small ecclesia, but this is like we shout for joy when our little group is together, and we are super super glad <clears throat> that you are joining us, everybody out there. And Mick had a question. He's like thoughts on the Trinity. One Thought, God, three personalities. So thoughts on the that. Trinity. Oh <laughs> well, I mean that is I guess a good Shabbat way to begin on this. Um, it is very clear, our brother Mick, that when you read the scriptures that, um, and I guess if you look at the history of the Trinity and where the Trinity came from, um, it actually came out of the Catholic Church. It came from 325 AD, 325 years after our creator uh, son was walking the earth. Um, they came up with it, and it is very clear when you read things like the Shema, where it says, uh, Hear, O Yisrael, uh, Yahuwah Eloheinu is one, and our Creator also says he's a very jealous El. He, he doesn't, there are no other Elohim before him. So if, if that is the case and what he says, that there if there are no other Elohim before him, if we create Messiah Yahusha, or as people say, Jesus the Christ, and, and I'd like to, to remind everybody, there were no J's in Hebrew. The, that letter was not in their alphabet, so there's absolutely no way possible that our Creator's son's name was Jesus. And so, it, more than likely, it's very close to Yahusha, which is Joshua with a Y. But it, it's very clear, you can read the book of John, and John is very, very clear about who Messiah Yahusha is, and he never ever once says he is our creator. He never says, I am Yahuwah. He always says, I am the son of Yahuwah. And there's a couple of verses where people will go, well, he says, I am. And when he says, I am, he's simply replying back to a question. And he's saying, yeah, I am. It's like my son, Jaden, saying, are you the, the son of Jason? He goes, I am. He's not saying he's Yah. He's, he's saying that he's the son of Jason. So um, it, their trinity is a very bad deception. It is something that has plagued a lot of people. People will pray to Messiah Yahusha, and it is very clear we are supposed to pray to the Father and not the Son. And so the Trinity is a big bust, but it is one of those um, things, that the programming that we have all come to be programmed in, because that's what the Christians believe. And so they, it is unbiblical. It, I've never, ever found a basis for it in, in all of scriptures, especially in the scriptures that have been taken out of the Bible. It is very clear that the Son is our sacrifice and um, that it's the father-son team. It's a tag team duo. It doesn't take anything away from Messiah Yahusha that he is not Yah. It, it makes it that he is a son. And it makes the sacrifice that both of them as the team did amazing. Because the father allowed the son to be essentially tortured to death and hung and died for the sins of the world. A precious, perfect sacrifice, which was what the Levitical priests had to do with the sacrifices back then. So he brought a blood sacrifice to us, and it is by that blood that we are able to be saved, and by the name of Messiah Yahusha, that all men can be saved if they so call upon him. But they also must keep the law, statutes, and commands of our Creator. So that was a good run on, Mick, Mr. Mick. I hope you are having a wonderful day, everybody out there in the chat room. Zach and all, and the Grand, much love to you all. All right, guys, this is um, one of the favorite parts of our time. Uh, actually, here, we have two things. Nicole says I, she gave me a little prayer thing, and that means I need to pray. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. 
Father, your creation, your creatures, your creatures are calling out to you. Your creation is calling out to you. We are looking for you, Father. You have guided us with your Torah. You have guided us with your scriptures. Father, you have said if we dwell with you, you will dwell with us. Father, we're asking that the Ruha Kakadesh dwells upon us today. We thank you for the sacrifice of Messiah Yahusha. We thank you for your word and for giving us an opportunity to seek the, the kingdom and for giving us hope and giving us a world that we can have after this world that we are in. Father, I ask that we are all keeping the laws, statutes, and commands and that it is written upon our hearts, minds, and souls and that you will walk with us as you said you would walk with us. I thank you for everything. I thank you for your Shabbat. I thank you for these people out there, Father. I ask that you will bless every person that is listening to this, that you will work in their lives, that you will enhance their lives, that you will seek them as we seek you. And Father, we thank you so much for everything. We ask this all in the name of Yahusha. Amen. And we also need to pray for... And that's our roof, guys. That <laughs> just makes these sounds. The Graham just said, please pray for my little dishwasher baker lady. She sliced open her thumb yesterday while we were at work. Her name is Andrita. 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 Uh, A-N-I-T-R-A. Anita. Uh, not quite Anita. I can't say... I'd... I don't know. She's 72 and on warfarin, which is a blood thinner. Oh, okay. So thank you, family. Yep, uh, we'll do the grand for sure. We will see and give us an update on her as it goes. All right, guys, we are in month seven. It is the seventh day of the week. It is the fifth day of this month right here. And so next week, next week, what do we have going on, everybody? We have Yom, Yom Kippur. We have the Day of Atonement, and it starts on the sunset of the ninth and is the tenth. And the command that we have for that is to afflict our souls. And we don't have much more than that of afflict the souls. And so there, that could actually mean a lot of things. But I, for us, we, um, we fast. And so we fast on from the 9th all day on the 10th until the sunset. And then we will eat. And that is how we would be afflicting our souls. Now, this is the fun part that we always get into. And this is what we are told to do. Now, in the book of Deuteronomy, <clears throat> it's told that we are to write these laws, statutes, and commands upon our heart, mind, and soul, and upon everything that we do. And there's only one way that we are ever going to be able to understand them, that we're going to be able to know them, that we're going to be able to have them in our lives. And this is why we will go over with them on Shabbat. And as you guys hear the, the birds in the background, we are super sorry for the disturbances. As our roof makes noise, we're super sorry for the disturbances. Hopefully all that stuff will be totally okay and you guys will be able to hear this just fine. But these laws, statutes, and commands are for us to govern our lives by. We may not be able to live um, under the same laws because we are not in the land and there's some of the stuff we can't do. But for the most of it, we can absolutely do that. So... Is everybody around this table good? Yep. yep. All right. Let's begin. Um, let's do this and let's write these up on our heart, mind, and soul. Commandment number one is be fruitful. Multiply. Replenish the earth. Subdue it. Have dominion over the fish, fowl, and every living creature. The herb bearing in every tree is for food. Man and woman should build their own families. Master sin. Every clean moving thing that lives shall be food for you. Do not eat the blood. Walk before me and be perfect. Guard Yahuwah's covenant, law, statute, and commandments. Guys, and I'm going to always stop on this one because there is a law in the, in the scriptures that exceeds all of the others. And I'm not saying it exceeds importance because if you break one law, you break them all. But this law, if you look about guarding Yahuwah's covenants, that means you're, you're supposed to fight for them. You're supposed to um, keep them where you will never, ever lose them. And look at the amount of verses that our creator has told us that we need to guard his laws. And so if we take the laws of our creator and put them on the, in the trash can and basically say they're, they're nailed to the cross, we are absolutely not guarding the law, statutes, and commands of our creator. 53 times. 53 times is what it says in there. So that is, that is it's over 50 times. 53 times this is the biggest command in anything. Okay. Every male shall be circumcised at eight days old. Teach your children the commands and guard the way of Yahuwah. Remember Yahuwah's name for all generations. Keep the Pesach, the Passover. Keep the feast of unleavened bread, matzah. There is one Torah for the stranger and one Torah for uh, and when sh there's one Torah for the stranger and the Ibrahim. What that means is that means when all the Christians will tell you, oh, well, these, the, those laws are gone. We don't have to keep those laws. We don't have to do any of that stuff. It says clearly, and it reiterates it five times, that there is one Torah. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. It is for you, 
and it is for the stranger. It is for anybody that wants to seek the face of our creator. That's what these laws are for. Sanctify all firstborn to Yahuwah. There are no mighty ones before Yahuwah. You shall not make any graven images. Do not bring Yahuwah's name. Do not keep the Shabbat. Keep Honor the Shabbat, guys. And I'm going to stop on that real quick. Sorry, Eli. Three, six, seven, eight. Eight times in here we have this that we are to keep the Shabbat. Now, one of my favorite ones, Eli. Go ahead. Honor your parents. Great. Do not kill. Do not break wedlock. Do not steal. Do not make false accusations against your neighbor. Do not covet anything of your neighbors. Do not make an altar from rock that a tool has touched. Do not go up the altar by the steps. If a man steals cattle, he shall restore it five times. There's a whole set of laws for criminals. You shall stone the witches, wizards, and mediums. And notice this is a commandment that has an asterisk by it because in the world we live in right now, you would end up in the clink, you would end up in jail if you go and you kill the witches, wizards, and mediums. In fact, the entire world has gone to this. They, they love the witches, wizards, and mediums. Okay, do not lie with beast. No sacrifices to other gods. Do not oppress a stranger, fatherless, or widow. Do not charge your brother interest. If you borrow your neighbor's raiment, return it to him before sunset. Do not curse the ruler of your people. Do not eat what is torn of any beast. No false report. Do not follow a multitude of evil. Do not judge unrighteously against the poor. Bring back your enemy's cattle if you find it going astray. Help the animals of your enemy. See, and this is, I, I would like to pause right here because if we take these laws and we say, okay, they're on the cross, then you're okay, you're okay. Help the animals of your enemy. Well, if, that's, if those laws are on the cross, then I see an animal down and I don't like the guy, then I will just let his, his animal be punished because I don't like him, right? And that's what our creator says is a no-no. And this is why we need to write these on our, our hearts. Stay away from rumors and gossipers. Take no bribes. Do not oppress a stranger. Love the stranger. Give your land rest in the seventh year. Do not mention any pagan names. Keep the feast of Yahuwah. Do not cook your goat in his mother's milk. Obey the messenger Yahuwah sends before you. Do not bow down to other Elohim. Serve Yahuwah. Absolutely. Make no covenant with other Elohim or outsiders of the land. Do not make or use his anointing on a normal person. Do not make or use this perfume on a normal person. These were Levitical um, anointing oils and things of that nature that we are not to mix up and use in this fashion. Do not eat the fat. Do what you say you are going to do. Return what is your neighbors. Well, is that on the cross? That means if, if uh, these laws are on the cross, that means we don't have to return what's our neighbors, right? We don't have to say what we are going to do. We can eat the fat and we can make this perfume and use it whatever, however we want to, right? That's, that's what is right in your own eyes. But unfortunately, that's a law as well. Okay. Obey Yahuwah's dietary laws. No piggy. Guys, no piggy. Do not eat the pig. Do not eat lobster. Do not eat shrimp. Do not eat roadkill. Do not eat um, uh, fish without fins on them. Um, or, or excuse me, scales. Um, there's, there's a whole set of those. And there's, it's very important, right? What are cling foods, guys? Cows. Chicken. Chicken. Trav. 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 Yeah. Deer. Deer. Okay. Things like that. Okay. Women's time of separation. You're supposed to stay away from them, and there is laws regarding this, um, and you're not supposed to get with them during the time of separation. Obey Yahuwah's hygiene laws. Keep the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippurim. Do not uncover the nakedness to your family. Do not take your woman's sister for a wife. Do not lie with a woman in her uncleanness. You shall not sacrifice your children in Moloch. Do not be a sodomite. Be holy. Do not reap the corners of your field, or you shall not glean your vineyard. Do not deal falsely or defraud your neighbor. Do not lie or be a liar. Pay your workers for the day's wage they are due. Wow, yeah. you know, these are these are very common sense things, right? And it was always talking about a, a guy who is broke who comes to you and he needs you he needs work, and if you withhold his pay, he cries out to Yah and Yah hears this. This is how much our creator cares about all of us. Is tuna fish clean or tuna? Yes, yes. I, think, I believe yes, scales? tuna is clean. I believe I don't yeah. I, 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 I think tuna and salmon are both clean. Okay. Okay. Do, do not harm the disabled. Do not endanger your neighbor. Do not hate your brother. Rebuke, Rebuke your neighbor for his sin. All right. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do not diverse your cattle. Do not mingle your seed. Do not mingle linen and wool. Do not lie with a taken woman. Do not eat the fruit of the tree for three years. Do not practice sorcery. Do not round your beard or the corners of your head. Don't be a beta. Do not cut yourself for the dead. Don't get tattoos. Do not prostitute your daughter. Do not defile your temple. Don't consult the mediums. 
Respect your elders. Have correct weights and measures. Do not walk in the manners of the nation. All right, what's walking in the manners of the nations, folks? Uh, doing as the world does. Anything what? that the world does, that is the nations. Let's see, what do we got coming up? Oh, we're in a month of... Witches, wizards, we, mediums. We are in the month of... I, I would I can't... What do I say? We're in hell month. I mean, October 31st is the day of the dead where these people are... Da they Not only are they good dressing up like a witch... But then they go around. I mean, this is the they enjoy most, it. Yeah, the most wickedest, one of the most wickedest days of the entire year is coming up. And if you are participating in any way, shape, or form, especially where somebody comes up and goes, says trick or treat, and you give them something, I mean, this is all demonic. It's all satanic. And that's walking in the way of nations. What about Thanksgiving, guys? Is that walking in the way of the nations? Yeah, yeah. it's not. It's not a command by who is commanded by other people. That they do as like a celebration. No, and if people look up the history of Thanksgiving, two years, two or three years prior to them ever celebrating Thanksgiving, the the people that were doing this, they burned alive the Indians. And it, it was a very evil time. And it was a couple of years after they decided to have a, call it a Thanksgiving, but it was nothing where the Indians were hooking people up with corn and sitting down. And it wasn't the, the white men and the Indians together. It wasn't anything like that. That was a, a lie that we've been spun in history class. And so, yeah, those are the ways of the nations. If you're doing Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving, all of these different things, that's the ways of the nation. Keep the feast of first fruits, Shavuot, and the Omer count. Keep the feast of trumpets, Yom Terah. Keep the feast of Sukkot, Shemini Atret. If you bless you in the name of Yahuwah, you shall be put to death. Kill him. If you kill your neighbor's animal, you must give him another. Repay injury for injury. Honor the Jubilee year. Confess your sins to Yahuwah and repay who you have trespassed against. And the Torah of being a Nazarite. Wear zizits on the four corners of your garments. Yes, and that is very important. A lot of people don't do that. And for those of you out there, I hope you guys all wear zizits. It's super, super easy. We have a video on our... Um, channel here, which where Nicole is tying up seats zitz and it's basically a, a, a blue string. There's not blue and white, and the way the, the Jewish people do it, if you watch all the Jews, that's how you can distinguish people in covenant and out of covenant. If people are walking around with white seats zitz they're out of covenant. They're the wrong color. Our creator never said to wear white in the seats zitz or anything of the sort. So that's how you know if you're in covenant or not. The law of whoever touches a corpse. Follow Yahuwah's laws of inheritance. Torah of keeping your oath to Yahuwah. When in the land, the laws of murder and victims' families. And again, it's it's asterisk because we can't do some of this stuff, but it is very good stuff that we should all know. Do not add or take away from the word. Very, 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 very important, especially with today's reading that we're going to do. We're going to be reading from a book that is is a lot different than a lot of you guys have ever seen. It's a lot different than what we've seen, and we're going to we're going to have our primary reading with Hallelujah Scriptures, which you guys hopefully have seen, but it's a great translation. But we're we're making sure that we are not adding to or taking away. Now, on that same note, I asked you guys earlier, what does it mean to add or take away from the Torah? It, what does it mean? Adding to the Torah would mean you add commandments. You would add certain commandments to the Torah you, that are not in there. Or if you take away, you'd say the laws on the cross. Or well, I can do this. This doesn't mean that on the Torah. If you had a commandment that said don't eat pork, and you say, oh, he didn't mean this kind of pork. He meant uh, bacon instead. Right. That would be taken away from the Torah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And so when we are reading today's reading, it adds a tremendous amount of descriptions to things. And our job is to look and make sure that we do not violate Deuteronomy 4.2 in any way, shape, or form. We must guard Yah's laws at the risk of our lives. Guard your soul. Learn to fear Yahuwah. You shall love Yahuwah with all your heart. Bind the laws upon your hand and the front lips between your eyes. Write the laws on your doorpost. Do not tempt Yahuwah. Do what is right and good in the sight of Yahuwah. Do not be afraid of your enemies. Remember Yahuwah. Circumcise your heart. Cleave to Yahuwah. Swear by his name. Destroy graven images. Do not make an idol of Yahuwah, as the pagans do to their Elohim. Rejoice in all Yahuwah has blessed you with. Okay, 124, let's go back to this. <clears throat> when it says do not make an idol of Yahuwah, as the pagans do to their Elohim, people walk around with crosses all the time. They walk around with... Uh, they, people have Messiah Yahusha, right? They have pictures of it. We're not supposed to have any of that, right? If you have graven images at all, even like pictures of this, we're not supposed to do that. So all of that stuff is evil in the eyes of Yah. Yah is a living, breathing entity that we don't need to make wood. We don't need to make pictures. We don't need to make other stuff of it because he's all around us in the air that we breathe, everything that we do. That's where our creator is. Rejoice in all that Yahuwah has blessed you with. 
Do not not do what is right in your own eyes. Do not hearken to the words of false prophets. Kill the false prophets. Kill them all. Do not listen and kill those that try to turn you away from Yahuwah, even if they are family members. And again, guys, we put commandment 128 and 129 in here. Even though if you kill the false prophets, you're going to end up doing prison time, uh, probably. And it's, 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 it's the wrong time in the world right now. Um, when we go into the Holy Land, this is going to be the thing. But then the next commandment on 129 is do not listen and kill those that try to turn you away from Yahuwah, even if they are family members. That is the command. You can read it there. And even though those are very hard words to hear, obviously you shouldn't kill them. But you would understand that when people come to your house and they, they knock on your door and they try to sell you another doctrine, another thing, if we were in the Holy Land, you would just take those people right outside the gates and you would kill them because they're trying to sell you another Elohim. If a city has turned away from Yahuwah, burn this city and all its inhabitants. And kill oh, all the kill inhabitants. All inhabitants. Okay. Do not make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. You shall not eat any abominable thing. You shall give to a stranger of food, cling food that dies of itself, but you shall not eat of it. Give tithe of your increase of seed year by year. Laws of the end of the seven year lease. Do not borrow from the nations. Do not harden your heart nor shut your hand from the poor. Guard one month of Yahuwah's calendar. Month one. Oh, yeah. month one, my Yeah, guard month one of Yahuwah's calendar. Three times a year, all males shall appear before Yahuwah. You shall make judges and officers in all your gates. Do not plant Asherah poles near the altar. And you would technically, you would kill anyone that tried to bring up an Asherah pole. And that, that could be a, a simple as a Christmas tree, right? So that's what it is. Any man or woman that has done wicked things in your gates, they shall be taken out and stoned. Yeah. There must be two or three witnesses. Absolutely. Hearken unto the prophet Yahweh has chosen. There's a prophet test of Deuteronomy and how, how to determine if somebody's a prophet or not. And what they say must come true. And if they ever say what, boys, what do we do? They, they say, say that follow other mighty ones. Yeah, if they ever say follow other mighty ones, then we kill them. Kill them. Okay. Do not remove your neighbor's property line. How to deal with a false witness among Torah keepers. The firstborn child is to get double portions. Uh, of course you read that one, huh, Jade? <laughs> the law of the wayward son. If a man is hung to death, he shall not remain all night. If your brother's cattle or clothes are lost and you find them, you must return them. Of course, that says if your bother's cattle. So we're actually proofreading this as we go. So, yeah, so if, if, if your brother's cattle or clothes are lost and you find them, you must return them. Wow, our creator loves us. He wants us to be clothed. He knows that we're going to be upset if we've lost our clothes, right? All right. All right. A woman should not wear what pertains to a man, nor a man what pertains to a woman. Don't do it, folks. If you find a bird's nest with the mother and the babies, or eggs, take the babies, not, but not the mother. If you build a new house with a flat roof that is able to be lived on, you must put a railing around it. Laws for the accuser and the accused in purity of relationships. Okay. If a man has a relationship with an engaged woman, both shall be, should be killed. And that means the woman is consensual with that, is how that command is. Okay. If, if, it, an engage, if an engaged woman is raped, she is not charged with a crime, but the man shall die. And that, yes, and that is only, that is if she is engaged. Um, she's good. She's clear. Um, and she can still continue on. But the next one, if a man forces himself up on an undefiled woman, he must pay the father and take her to be his wife. And this is one of these commands we could not figure out. We thought it was the law of rape. But it actually takes care of this woman who has been humbled by this guy. And even though it is an extremely vile act, completely um, ready to have the guy killed, in the land, he, our creator is taking care of this woman because she will end up with her, her father. And when he dies, she'll end up in the streets. And so it's going to be more uh, sadness and more, more broken people in, in Yashrael. Do not be a prostitute. Do not use dirty money. May, you may eat from your neighbor's vineyard or grain, but you may not take it out of the field. Law of divorce. There is a law of divorce. Newly married man should stay home for one year to be with his wife. Do not take a person's millstone for a pledge. What does that mean, boys? Uh, that's it, what he grinds his food up with, I think, so that means he wouldn't yeah, be able to eat his food when he, he got out of the field. Yeah, he won't be able to grind his food. He won't be able to do anything. It basically shuts a person down if you can't grind your food. If a man is found kidnapping, he shall die. If you lend to your brother, do not enter his house to get your payment. He must bring it to you. Return his clothing before sunset, if that was his pledge. Do not oppress a hired servant that is poor and needy. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Do not go back for the forgotten sheep in the field. Leave it for the stranger, fatherless, and widow. 
You cannot give a man more than forty stripes for his judgment of his wickedness. Do not muzzle your ox when he treads out grain. If your brother dies and has no child, you shall take his wife and name the firstborn after your brother. If a woman comes to defend her man and grabs the other man's privates, you shall cut off her hand. At the end of seven years, you are to read the Torah at the Feast of Sukkot. All right, and that is it. What do we have going on? Anything in the chat? Um, I'm not quite sure what Richard B's trying to say, but he says, One of the laws were to stone the men that slept with men as a woman and burn them. Oops, another one out of the door. If you marry one that is divorced for any reason other than adultery, you should stone them also. Oops, another one. Yeah, I don't know what he's saying with that either. Um, those are laws, and I mean, they may not be things that you want to keep, but they are laws of Yah's people, and they are things that everybody should want to keep. And so, um, yes, you can't kill them like that, like if we were in the land, but you, we should all be aware of this, and if you commit adultery, you understand that your sin is worthy of death. So... Um, that is that. All right, guys. So let's get into today's reading. This is going to be very interesting. We're going to pop this up first. Take a quick look right here. And this is our, this is what we're going to be reading out of as a secondary. And so we have a, we have a, uh, book scanner that is coming and it is, uh, by a brother that hooked us up and hooked y'all up, honestly. And we are going to be reading, um, out of the Hallelujah scriptures. And so, first of all, let's get this up. We will do the handy-dandy split screen. All right. And we are going to do this one right here. Now, if you will bear with us, today's reading, if you guys look at this, this, this is the best that you can actually scan a book with until we get our cool scanner in. Once we have our handy-dandy scanner, then we will actually be able to read this, and it's not going to look all like it's like moving to the left and down and, and it's terrible. And so Eli get us set up at the top on this. And so this book at the top is called the Targum. And I have a hard time even knowing what this thing says. I can't get it down. And I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see that there, but we will be reading that. And so let us begin. And so the bottom, bottom, um, book that we're reading is, is called the Hallelujah scriptures. If you guys have never heard of the Hallelujah scriptures, First and foremost, if there's any way possible you guys can afford a Hallelujah Scriptures, I would say it is a very good adventure to get. And they, um, they're they not free, and they, they say they're free, but you, you have to do a donation. But I guess if you plead your case, they may send you one free. I don't know if that is a case. I would hope that is a case. It but says you can send them an email on their website send and them an tell email. them what why you would need a free one, why you can't afford one. Yeah, and so if you send them an email and you just go to Hallelujah Scriptures and you just Google search that Hallelujah Scriptures and it's if it's uh, it's a Y-A-H at the end, right? Because there were no J's in Hebrew, so our, our creator's name is not Jah, it's Yah. And so let us begin with this and let's see what we can figure out and um, see if we can dial this in. So this is bare sheet. This is Genesis. Let's see what it says. In the beginning, Elohim created the Shemaim and the earth. And the earth came to be formless and empty, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Ruach of Elohim was moving on the face of the waters. Okay, now, this is where we want to look at the top of this, and let's see what's different between this other version. So in version one of the Targum, let's see. At the beginning, Yahuwah created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was vacancy and desolation, solitary of the sons of men, and void of every animal. And darkness was upon the face of the abyss. And the spirit of mercies from before Yahuwah breathed upon the face of the waters. Okay. Sounds pretty much the same, right? Everyone? Yeah. yeah. Gentlemen? Yeah. Anyone there? Anyone just bobbing their heads? Or we got, we got action here? Good okay. to go. Good to go. Thank you, Nicole. All right. So we are on three in this one, right? Yep. It's three on this. This is just, a, it's, it's really hard. This is why I like the Sephir, because it was an actual app and things, and it wasn't all jacked. But... We'll make do. And Elohim said, let light come to be, and light came to be. And Elohim saw the, saw the light, that it was good, and Elohim separated the light from the darkness. Okay, now, Eli, when I'm, so we're in the next one here. I we we're still at the top. Or no, we just made it. No. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I did mess this up. There's two versions in this, guys. There is a top version. We're, we're just cutting our teeth on this one. So the top version um, has two different versions, right? If you, I don't know if you guys can see this. Right here where it says Jerusalem Targum, I don't know what the difference is, but it's almost the same reading 
as the line above it. So let's see what it says for verse 3. I am so sorry, guys. This is clunky. And Yahuwah said, let there be light and to enlighten above. And at once there was light. And Yahuwah beheld the light that it was good. And Yahuwah divided the light and the darkness. And Yahuwah called the light day. And he made it that the inhabitants of the world might labor by it. And the darkness he called night. And he made it that it in that in it the creatures might have rest. And it was evening and the morning the first day. Now this is something I'd like to touch on here because a lot of people have a lot of hard problem trying to figure out when a day is. When does a Hebrew day begin? And everyone believes that our creator said something like um, night and day were the first days. And he says, I think five times in Genesis right here, um, he says um, the night that the first it's, it's, it was morning it was and it was evening and it was morning the first day right and so we have evening and morning so we know that from sunset to sunset is our shabbat or a day and that's that's how to that's how we have been told to it but a lot of people want to do shabbat and days from sunrise to sunrise and i don't find any precedent here all right so where are we at eli on this one um so i think you guys are on five right i don't know you have to keep track of this yeah, so where are we at well, Neil? here we're on five okay and Elohim called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there came to be evening, and there came to be morning, day one. Okay, now... You already read that part in the previous part. Okay, so let me know when I need to read the top part, because this is extremely okay. confusing. And Elohim said, Let an expanse come to be in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. Okay? okay so that would be the top up here. Okay, and Yahuwah said, let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters and let it separate between the waters and the waters beneath. So is every paragraph a verse on this? Uh-huh. Okay, so get me to the kind next Kind of, one. like some of them are together, though. All right, so flag me when I need to read the top part. All right. All right, it's seven. And Elohim made the expanse and separated the waters, which were under the expanse from the waters, which were above the expanse, and it came to be so. So, um, oh, okay. two, and it's yep. next verse. And Elohim called the expanse Shimaim, and there came to be an evening, and there came to be morning the second day. And again, we have there came to be evening, and there came to be morning the second day, right? If, if it would say the other way around, right? And it came to be morning and then evening, and that would be the second day, but that's not what it says. Okay, let's read in the Targum. And Yahuwah made the expanse, upbearing it with three fingers between the confines of the heavens and the waters of the ocean, and separated between the waters which were below the expanse and the waters which were above in the collection or covering of the expanse, and it was so. And Yahuwah called the expanse the heavens, and it was evening, and it was morning, the second day. Okay, so it's pretty close to the same. The only thing that I've seen different so far is that it says Elohim lifted three fingers, right? He, he basically had it for three, you guys with me? Yeah. Yep. Do you want to be? Yeah. Okay, I'm, getting, I'm getting no response out of you guys. I can't tell if you guys are sleeping on me. Are you guys sleeping? You're not sleeping? Yes, okay. I'll be from 9 to 11. 9 to 11. All right. Here we go. And Elohim said, let the waters under the Shimaim be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it came to be so. And Elohim called the dry land earth and the collection of the waters he called seas. And Elohim saw that it was good. And Elohim said, let the earth bring forth grass the plant that yields seed and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth, and it came to be so. Actually, it's further. It's further? until third, until third. All right. Yeah. And the earth brought forth grass, the plant that yields seed according to its kind, and the tree that yields fruit, whose seed is in itself according to its kind. And Elohim saw that it was good. Okay, and we're still continuing on. Mm -hmm. And there came to be evening, and there came to be morning. The third, sorry guys, I got to go to the top. This is a mess. The third day. Yeah. Okay, now let's read this in the Targum and let's find out what are the differences between what we have all heard for pretty much all our lives and between now. And Yahuwah said, let the lower waters which remain under the heavens be gathered together into one place and the earth be dried and the land may be visible. And it was so. And Yahuwah called the dry land the earth and the place of the assemblage of water called he the seas. And Yahuwah saw that it was good. And Yahuwah said, let the earth increase the grassy herb whose seed seedeth and the fruit tree making fruit after its kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth produced grasses and herbage 
whose seed seedeth, and the tree making her fruit after its kind. And Yahuwah saw that it was good, and it was evening, and it was morning, the third day. Now, before you guys give up on us and say this sounds almost exactly the same, hang on. It, it does get very interesting very quickly. And so this is, uh, there is a, there's a method to this madness. All right, hold on. Okay, and Elohim said, let lights come to be in the expanse of the Shemaim to separate the day from the night. Let them be for signs and appointed times and for days and for years. And let them be for lights in the expanse of the Shemaim to give light on the earth, and it came to be so. And Elohim made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. And Elohim placed them in the expanse of the Shemaim to give light on the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And Elohim saw that it was good. But it's like way different than, than the Targum. I don't even like quite understand where you're at. All right, so let's take a look, quick look. Now, so we're on the third day, yeah. so here we go. And Yahuwah said, let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens. And this is a target, guys, at the top. To distinguish between the day and the night. And let them be for signs and for festival times. And for the numbering by them, the account of days. And for the sanctifying of the beginning of months and the beginning of years, the passing away of months and the passing away of years, the revolutions of the sun, the birth of the moon, and the revolution of seasons. Why is everybody here looking at me like this? Nicole, why are you looking at me? It just tells you that it's the beginning of your months. Okay, am I reading something wrong? Because no. everybody's looking at me like I've just no. like started reading we something. We can't definitely read the books. We're just looking at you because we're not, we can't okay, read the same Okay, so what did that just say, gentlemen? So this so basically, says way more than the what we've ever seen. birth of everything. Okay, it says, Yahuwah said, let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens. We got that. Distinguish between the day and the night. Okay, and the lights are for signs of festival times. Right. And yeah. for the numbering by them, the account of days, which is what we just figured out with the moon, right? Completely with the moon. We can completely figure out when a new month is going to be here simply by looking at the moon. And I don't know how anybody would be able to count by the sun. Yeah, I know. Some people actually keep Shabbat by the sun, and they think the sun is the beginning of the day and things of that nature. The sun doesn't change sizes. It, well, no, it doesn't. And for, okay, and so, it's, so we're supposed to have them, and for sanctifying of the beginning of the months, so that would be our new moons, and the beginning of the years, right? We would know a new year, right? We absolutely. The passing away of months and the passing away of years. The revolutions of the sun, the birth of the moon, and the revolutions of seasons. And the revolvings, excuse me, of seasons. You didn't need a calendar back then. This was your calendar. Yeah, this was absolutely your calendar. This is very interesting. Okay, so let's continue on because it goes somewhere else. Okay. They're still in the Targum, guys. And if you see how much stuff is, is different, it, it's getting... Interesting. And let them be for luminaries in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And Yahuwah made two great luminaries, and they were equal in glory 20 and one years, less 600, and two and 70 parts of an hour. Now, we sat here, we tried to figure this out. We have absolutely zero clue what this means. But what they did say is it said at the very beginning they were the they were the same brightness, right? So what I think is it's an 18-hour day. It's an 18-hour day? Because if it says 72 parts of a day, that wouldn't work if you have only, if you have 24 hours. Yeah, 70 parts of an hour. Two and 70 parts of an hour. I, yeah, I, I don't I don't know how this is going to work. I mean, definitely we're not on hours or, or like minutes or anything like this. 90-minute hours, I think. This is Jaws' own calendar. And so I think if we figured this out, we'd probably get a little more enlightened. Okay. And afterwards, the moon recited against the sun a false report. And she was diminished. And the sun was appointed to be the greater light to rule over the day. And the moon to be the inferior light to rule in the night and the stars. And Yahuwah ordained them unto their offices in the expanse of the heavens to give forth light upon the earth. And to minister by day and by night to distinguish between the light of the day and of the darkness of the night. And Yahuwah beheld that it was good, and it was evening, and it was morning, the fourth day. All right, so there we go. We made it there. Eli, are you paying attention here? Yep. Okay, I don't think so. Let's continue on. So we're on the fourth day, so we're on 20 here on ours. Okay, and Elohim said, Let the waters teem with shoals of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth on the face of the expanse of the Shemaim. And Elohim created great sea creatures and every living creature that moves, with which the waters teemed according to their kind, and every winged bird according to its kind. And Elohim saw that it was good. 
And Elohim barak them, saying, Bear fruit and increase, and fill the waters and the seas, and let the birds increase on the earth. And there came to be evening, and there came to be morning, the fifth day. Okay, now let's see what it says right here. This is very interesting. It's going to get interesting earth. And Yahuwah said, Let the lakes of the waters swarm forth the reptile, the living animal, and the fowl, which filleth, or which flieth, excuse me, this is a really small print, whose nest is upon the earth, and let the way of the bird be upon the air of the expanse of the heavens. And Yahuwah created the great tannins, the Leviathan, and the yoke fellow, which are prepared for the day of consolation. Okay, we're going to stop right there because we never saw in Genesis ever, but we saw in Job about Le Leviathan. And we also saw where about Leviathan? Uh, I think it was... Is it Enoch? Enoch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Enoch talks about Leviathan. It talks about there's these giant dragons that are like impenetrable. They have um, like uh, scales. That are, you can't kill these things, whatever it is. But now in Genesis, we heard about this. And we heard about um, whatever the great Tannis is, is probably something horrible. We know the Leviathan is a giant dragon of some kind. And then it says his yoke fellow. And the yoke fellow is what is like uh, when he talks further in Eve, Eve is, is Adam's yoke fellow. And that is so it is like the Leviathan's. There's two of them. Yeah, there's two. There's two of them. Okay. So he prepares for the day of consolation for every living animal which creepeth and which the clear waters have had swarmed forth after their kind, the kinds which are cling and the kinds which are not cling. And every fowl which flieth with wings after their kinds, the cling and the uncling, and Yahuwah beheld that it was good. And he blessed them, saying, Increase and multiply, and fill the waters of the seas, and let the fowl multiply upon the earth. And it was evening, and it was morning, day the fifth. Okay, so we have never heard before about cling and uncling animals right here in Genesis before, right? Yeah, right? We I, just read this in Hallelujah yeah. Scriptures, right? Yeah. Are you with me? Yep. Okay, so this is very interesting. We have anything going on in the comments? No. No one? All right, so here we go. Let's continue on. And it, where am I at? And it came to be... You're 24. 24, all right. And Elohim said... And we're reading in the Hallowed Scriptures at the bottom right here, guys. And Elohim said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature according to its kind, livestock and creeping creatures, and beasts of the earth according to its kind. And it came to be so. And Elohim made the beast of the earth according to its kind, livestock according to its kind, and all that creep on the earth according to its kind. And Elohim saw that it was good. Okay, are we there? Yep. Okay, now we're going to the top. Let's see what the Targum says. And Yahuwah said, let the soil of the earth bring forth the living creatures according to his kind, the kind that is cling and the kind that is uncling, cattle and creeping thing, and the creature of the earth according to his kind. And it was so. And Yahuwah made the beast of the earth after his kind, the cling and the uncling, and cattle after their kind, and every reptile of the earth after its kind, the cling and uncling, and Yahuwah saw it was good. All right, guys, I think this is a worthy of a discussion right here, right? This, obviously, so far, I don't see a problem with this book. In fact, if we had this kind of of terminology in our, our King James version that talks about the cling and the uncling, it would be a much bigger thing, right? Right out of, we're not even out of Genesis one. And he's talking about the cling and uncling animals. And the Christians don't know any of this. Nobody has any idea about the cling and uncling unless you keep Torah and understand what it is. But this stuff was probably in the original text. That was common knowledge for these people. Well, yeah, it was in the Genesis 1, the very first thing. He made cling and uncling. The, the Christians would go, what does that mean, he made cling and uncling? And that's why no one knew that the ark, and when he brought the seven animals in the ark, which was clean and unclean, he didn't bring seven pigs, yeah. only two sheep, and didn't get confused. He already knew what was Yeah, what. 14 of, of each cling animal he had. All right, are we on 26, Nicole? I think so. Okay. Um, yeah, you're on 26. Okay. And then I have to go to the next page. It's a little funky here. Okay. And Elohim said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the Shimaim and over the livestock and over all the earth and over all the creeping creatures that creep on the earth. Okay. So what, wait a second. He just said what now? Let, okay, this was one, this right here, we're going to get an answer to this, but I never had an answer to this. I thought it was uh, Messiah Yahusha and Yah and whoever else that Yah has up there. He says, let us make man in our image. And O-U-R in the in the Holy Scriptures, the O is capitalized. Mm -hmm. So it's proper. I did not know what that was. I had no idea, but we're about to get an answer to this because it makes a tremendous amount of sense. Okay. And Elohim created the man in his image and the image of Elohim, he created him. 
male and female, he created them. And Elohim barak them. And Elohim said to them, bear fruit and increase and fill the earth and subdue it and rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the Shimaim and over all, the, all creatures moving on the earth. And Elohim said, see, I have given you every plant that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth and every tree whose fruit yields seed. To you, it is food. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the Shimaim and to every creeping creature on the earth, which there is breath of life, every green plant is for food. And it came to be so. And Elohim saw all that he had made and see it was very good. And there came to be evening and there came to be morning the sixth day. Again, folks, evening and there came to be morning. Do you think our creator messed that up? Because you wouldn't have evening and this morning unless that was his day. And that is what it is. Okay, now this is where it gets very interesting, all right? This is where we learn some stuff. And again, we are looking for things that pull away from the Torah or add to the Torah. If we're just simply adding in storyline, that is not adding to the Torah. If we are, if, detail. if we are, yeah, yeah, detail, storyline. If we are saying something different, like, oh, you can drink the blood or you can eat the fat or you can do whatever, that's where this book starts burning. We'd burn it up because it's no good. Okay, this is in the Targum. And Yahuwah said unto the messengers who ministered before him, who had, who had been created in the second day of the creation of the world. All right, let's pause right there. If you go into Jubilees, yeah. it tells you that same it thing. It says the same thing? Yes. I can't. Did you guys remember that? I, I didn't know. We read too much. We, we lose track of that. Okay, so this is very, 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 very fascinating. He says, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the fowl which are in the atmosphere of heaven and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every reptile creeping upon the earth. And Yahuwah created man in his likeness. All right, so there we know now what, let us create man in our image. He was talking to the messengers that were there. Okay, so that makes a tremendous amount of sense. Now, the next thing here, it goes into the Jerusalem. Um, okay, and I'm not going to read that again. Yeah, in the image of Yahuwah, he created them with 240 and eight members, with 360 and five nerves, and overlaid them with skin and filled it with flesh and blood. Okay, what are we? What is it even saying here, Nicole? You have this figured out. The members are the bones of the right. body. Right. Okay, so we have. So what does it say here? This is such small print. I'm struggling here. So 248 members, 248 bones. Does anyone look up how many bones we have in our body? Yeah, and it doesn't say they have that many. How many does it say? I can't remember for sure, but it was less. Don't than babies that. have a whole bunch more bones? Because is, it's is fear said, monger here yet? He would no, know. He's he not might here know. Yet. All right. So anyway, it says right here that there were 248 members, the bones, with 365 nerves and overlaid them with skin and filled it with flesh and blood. Male and female in their bodies he created them and he blessed them and Yahuwah said to them, increase and multiply and fill the earth with sons and daughters and prevail over it in his possessions and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the heavens and over every creeping animal that creepeth upon the earth. And Yahuwah said, Behold, I have given you every herb whose seed seedeth upon the face of all the earth and every unfruitful tree for the need of building and for burning and the tree in which is fruit seeding after its kind to you it shall be for food. But to every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the heavens and to every reptile upon the earth in which is the living soul, I have given all green herbs and it was so. And Yahuwah beheld everything he had made, and it was very good. And it was evening, and it was morning, the sixth day. So it makes sense where he says uh, you can burn you can burn the trees for cooking and burning. He says you can build, cut it down. It makes sense when he tells the Israelites, don't go cut down the fruit trees. They didn't wage war against you. They bear fruit. You can eat them. Yeah, absolutely. All of this stuff is makes a tremendous amount of sense. And I think our job is going to be to eat the meat, spit the bones, if we find the bones, and um, this is interesting. Zacharias, says 206 to 213 bones in the body. And so, and I think you were talking when you were reading on this, Nicole, that, that bones will fuse themselves yeah, together. Yeah, and I remember the 206. Yeah, so bones will fuse. After them. they all fuse. Don't babies have like more bones when they start growing out of it? Yeah, yeah. I, I think so. 
I don't. Because they start fusing. Together. Yeah, so maybe, maybe since they were, maybe they were born, it's like babies or something. Well, I don't think they were born. Says, there are typically around 270 in human infants, which fuse to become 206 to 213 Aha. in an adult. All right. So this looks good. Thank you. Thank you, Rhiannon. Thanks, Zach. Okay. Let's go on to two. This is interesting, right? Is, is, is So far, everyone? Yeah. You guys good? Is this is this Torah or is this not? I mean, I, I don't see so. a problem with it. I haven't seen anything against it yet. I mean, Everything just gives us more idea, I, ideas and what... What, what we missed and things like the extra career books like Jasher and Jubilees also didn't fill in. Yep. Okay. Let's go. Verse the chapter two of the Hallelujah Scriptures. And again, for those who the bottom um, book that we're reading is a book that you guys can obtain. Most of you can obtain. But of course, there's a lot of people out there that do not have mailing addresses. And so this is why we're trying to bring this book to life um, and why we're so excited to actually be reading from this because we would not be reading from the Sefer if we had a digital version of this. And we've been reading from the Hallelujah Scriptures as a family for six years, something like that? Yeah, I think seven, so. Seven years, maybe? Uh, yeah, well, six. Yeah, it's been a long time. And that's until I lost my vision, I still can't see it real well. I need the, the, the big print. Um, this is what we always primarily did. Okay, chapter two. Thus the Shimaim and the earth were completed and all their array. And on the seventh day, yay! That's right. Elohim completed his work, which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And Elohim Barak the seventh day and made it Kodesh because on it he rested from all his work which Elohim created, which Elohim in creating had made. These are the births of the Shemaim and the earth when they were created in the day that Yahuwah Elohim made earth and Shemaim. Okay, now where are we at? Are we... We're still further down. Okay. Now no shrub of the field was yet on earth, and no plant of the field had yet sprung up. For Yahuwah Elohim had not sent rain on the earth, and there was no man to till the ground. But a mist went up from the earth and watered the entire surface of the ground, and Yahuwah Elohim formed the man, and we'll get up here, uh -huh. out of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Okay, so where are we at? Uh, up here. Okay, so let's go up to the Targum up top. All, and all... And the creatures of the heavens and the earth and all the hosts of them were completed. And Yahuwah had finished by the seventh day the work which he had wrought. And the ten formations which he had created between the suns. And he rested the seventh day from all his work which he had performed. Okay, hold on. It just said there's ten formations. Do we know how many actual real continents there are? I mean, this is what I'm thinking. The ten formations, I think, are the continents. No? I don't think so. I think it was what he created. The fell. Yeah, but what do you lights. mean? The, the fell the what? Ten like, different things. Like since you have birds, fish, people. The sun, the moon, birds, the stars. Sun, like sky stuff. I don't I know. I think there was ten different things in that. I don't think it talks about the continents. Well, I mean, what are the ten formations? Well, maybe I guess that's the humans. All right. Well, I guess we'll go with that. Uh, and the ten formations which he created between the suns. And he rested the seventh day. See, the, where, I, where I thought it was the, like the continents, it says mm -hmm. created between the suns. Jubilees has it. Jubilees has it? Yeah. Nicole's running off to go grab a book or something, I guess. Okay, and he rested the seventh... Okay, hold on, real quick. Because the Jubilees explains that, too. Okay, the Jubilees. The Jubilees. <laughs> like the Google. <laughs> Sorry, Jubilees. <laughs> um... I don't know where it is. All right, she's going to be looking for this. We'll continue on. And he rested the seventh day from all his works, which he had performed. And Yahuwah blessed the seventh day more than all the days of the week and sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his works, which Yahuwah had created and had willed to make. These are the genesis of the heavens and earth when they were created in the day that Yahuwah Elohim made the heaven and earth and heavens. And all the trees of the field were not as yet on the earth, and all the herbs of the field had not as of yet germinated, because Yahuwah Elohim had not made it to rain upon the earth, and man was not to cultivate the ground. But a cloud of glory descended from the throne of glory, and was filled with water from the ocean, and afterward went up from the earth, and gave rain to come down, and water all the face of the ground. It's giant sponge. Giant sponge, but I mean, it's it's interesting. I mean, why are the clouds this like a, a some sort of spirit from Yah or something? Sky sponge. Yeah, sky sponge. Okay. All right, so we're on nine. Um, Nicole, you can probably find that later. Okay. All right, so does anyone know? Are we on nine? Anyone that is paying? Oh uh, yeah, we're on seven. On Holly Scriptures. Uh, seven in Holly Scriptures. Yes. That can't be. Uh, I just already read that. Uh, we're on eight. Yeah, we're on eight. Okay. 
And Yahuwah Elohim planted a garden in the Eden to the west, or to the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground, Elohim made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, with the tree of Kai in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from there it divided and became four river heads. The name of the first one is Pishon. It is one surrounding the entire land of Kal Kalewa, where there is gold. Okay. okay um, um, you went too far. I didn't understand because I had like way more stuff about uh, the Knock the on truth. your skull. That's too uh, slow. It went too far. All right. I didn't understand. All right. And Yahuwah Elo Elohim created man in two formations and took dust from the place of the house. This is the, the target, guys. Place of the house of the sanctuary. All right. What did it just say there? And Yahuwah Elohim created man in two formations and took dust from the place of the house of the sanctuary and from the four winds of the world and mixed from all the waters of the world and created him red, black, and white and breathed into his nostrils the inspiration of life. And there was in the body of Adam the inspiration of a speaking spirit unto the illumination of the eyes and the hearing of the ears. What is this to say? Uh, so is, is he in multiple colored skin, or is, is this like, where the is this where multiple colored skin comes in? Or is that is this, or is the red blood, and then like the white could be like like tissue, like inside tissue or something? I, I think those this pretty much covers. I mean, is there other colors of people? I don't know. I mean, we we know white, black. Uh, they call like Indians like reddish or have reddish tint skin. I don't think the red might be blood like when you talking about like putting like red and then maybe like white tissue on the inside and then. And it said, well, it said and created him red, black, and white. And, and I mean, he's talking about creating man and not, not just simply because Adams, I think, is. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know why red, black, and white. Red, black, and white, and breathed into his nostrils the inspiration of life. And there was in his body of Adam the inspiration of a speaking spirit unto the illumination of the eyes and the hearing of the ear. And I mean, this would be amazing that all the, the messengers on day two were sitting there and all of a sudden Yah sat there and fused these bones together and they're all sitting there. First he goes, let's make this an hour image. Then he puts the bones together, then he fuses in like nerves, and he throws flesh over the top of it. And um, all of a sudden, Adam's eyes were open and it's like this thing was alive, right? And they said it had a speaking spirit. This thing that's like, who, are, who am I? What am I doing here? Um, it, it's just amazing. All right, and so yeah, Brianna so. says she's Navajo Indian, and she's like a brown olive color. <laughs> brown olive color, yeah. So I but see. I'm wondering if it's like the spirits, because he named three different spirits there, right? He named. Wait a second. What's he named the, the ears, the eyes, and something else. Spirits. What are you talking about? Didn't say anything about spirit. He said Adam, the inspiration of Inspir a speaking spirit. Uh huh. So basically, speaking spirit unto the illumination of the eyes and the hearing of the ears. Um. I don't the, have, the why would that have anything so to do with So I just wondered, each one of those are like a different color or something. I don't think I don't so. Know. That yeah. doesn't sound uh, like Jerusalem you know. says, and Adam Maybe. became a soul of life. So. Yeah, and I mean, it would just be very amazing seeing your creator build something like this, and all of a sudden he comes to life, right? And so they, they see this. All right, um, where are we at up here? Oh, next do I need to read the next one? Yeah. Okay. Um, you need to go up, right? And... A garden from the Eden of the just was planted by the words of Yahuwah Elohim before the creation of the world. And he made there to dwell the man when he had created him. Okay, this is, this is very interesting, right? It says Eden was made before the rest of the world. The, the first spot he built? Huh? First little spot he built? Well, I mean, if, if he says he created the I mean, he had, how would the world... I mean, maybe he created the world around Eden, or maybe Eden is it where we think it is. Maybe Eden is able to just—I don't know. I don't know what it is. I'm just speculating. All right, and Yahuwah Elohim made to grow from the ground every tree that was desirable to behold and good to eat, and the tree of life in the midst of the garden, whose height was a journey of five hundred years, and the tree of whose fruit they who ate would distinguish between good and evil. Wow, what do you guys think that means? Five, five uh, five hundred. Like it takes five hundred years to climb that tree. Maybe five hundred year old tree. Maybe it's a five hundred year old tree. Maybe I don't know. Maybe or it's. Oh, uh, so it says his height is a journey of five hundred. Well, years. it's it's the height. I think it is. I think you're right, Jade. I think it is the the height of the tree because it, as trees grow. I mean, maybe he had that tree. I don't know. I don't know any of this. He's got a garden. He just like replanted maybe it. Maybe he built Eden, and then he built it for 500 years. And then after 500 years, he built seven days. Seven days and built everything else. I don't know. I think I want to go to Eden now. It sounds even better than I knew before. But this tree, I mean, it would be obvious this tree is 500, 500. I mean, if it was 500 years old, 
it would grow a little bit every year, right? That's right. how trees grow. That's how when you huge. chop a tree down, you see the little rings inside the stumps. You can count how many years this tree was there. So um, this could be it. It could be a 500-year-old tree right that's out of the gate. And that's why I was confused because there's way much more here than in the Holly of Scriptures. I know. There's way more in this version of it. But we have not... But we have not um, taken it away or added to so far that I know of. Okay, so where are we at in Hallelujah, guys? Um, I think you should go back to where you started with the uh, rivers. Okay, and this is where we're starting? Okay. Yeah. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from there it divided and became four river heads. The name of the first is Pishon. It is the one surrounding the entire land of Ka Kawila, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good, Bedellium is there, and the Shoham stone. And the name of the second river is Gihon. It is one surrounding the entire land of Cush. And the name of the third river is Kidikel. It is the one which goes toward the east of Ashur, and the fourth river is Perath. Okay. And a river, and we're at the, we're at the Targum. Targum. Targum? I have a hard time with this word, I don't know why. And a river went forth from Eden to water the garden, and from thence was separated, and became four heads of rivers, or four chief rivers. The name of the first is Fishon, that is which compasseth all the land of Hindiki, and there is gold, and the gold of that land is choice. There is Bedilka, and the precious stones of Beeris, and the name of the second river, Gikon, Gikon that is which encompass all the land of Cush, and the name of the third is Diglath, that is which goeth to the east of Atur, and the fourth river is Ferath. And Yahuwah took the man from the... Uh, no, it's just... Here. Okay, let's just roll. Sorry. We will get this dialed in, and this will be much better. Okay. 15. In the Holy Scriptures at the bottom. And Yahuwah Elohim took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work and to guard it. And Elohim commanded... Is that it? Yep. All right, thanks, Eli. And Yahuwah, go up to the top, guys. Sorry for the confusion. And Yahuwah Elohim took the man from the mountain of worship where he had been created. That's interesting. And made him dwell in the Garden of Eden to do service in the law and to keep its commandments. What? Okay, so it's in the, uh, it says guard it. So the, the Hallelujah Scripture says guard it. But it didn't say that he was created there. It says that we were, this is, it tells us here where man was created. In the mountain of worship. In the worship. mountain of worship. I wonder if that's Mount Zion. I wonder if it is. It could be Mount Zion. I don't know. Maybe we're created in Mount, Mount Zion or something. I, I do not know. But that's very interesting. That's a new thing that we do not know. All right. Um, let's see. And Elohim commanded the man saying, eat of every tree of the garden, but do not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall certainly die. Okay. In the Targum at the top, and Yahuwah Elohim commanded Adam saying, of every tree of the garden eating thou mayest eat. But of the tree of whose fruit they who eat become wise to know between good and evil, thou shalt not eat. For in the day that thou eatest, thou wilt be guilty of death. Okay, 18. And Yahuwah Elohim said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I am going to make a helper for him as his counterpart. And from the dust and from the ground, Elohim formed every beast of the field and every bird of the Shemaim and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. All right, you see that some more. Okay. So the man gave names to all livestock and to the birds of the Shemaim and to every beast of the field. But for the man, there was not found a helper for him as his counterpart. Okay. Oh, and we have two parts here. So at the, we're at the top again. And Yahuwah Elohim said, it is not right that Adam should be sleeping alone. I will make unto him a wife who will be a helper before him. And Yahuwah Elohim created the, from the earth every beast of the field and every fowl of the heavens and brought them to Adam to see what by what name he would call it. And whatever Adam called the living animal, that was his name. And Adam called the names of all cattle and all fowl of the heavens and all beasts of the field. But for Adam was not found yet a helper before him. Okay. One thing I find interesting is that in the Holy Scripture it still calls him the man, but in Targum it already has his name. It does. It is interesting. Okay. So Elohim caused a deep sleep to fall on the man, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh of its place, closed up the flesh in its place. And the rib which Yahuwah Elohim had taken from the man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. And the man said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. 
This one is called woman because she was taken out of man. For this cause, a man shall leave his father and mother and, and join unto his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, yet they were not ashamed. All right, this is it. And Yahuwah Elohim threw a deep slumber upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs. It was the 13th rib on the right side and closed it up with flesh. And Yahuwah Elohim builded the rib which he had taken from Adam into a woman, and he brought her to Adam. And he brought her to Adam. And Adam said, this time and not again is woman created from man. Okay, what does that mean right there? This time and not again. I guess this is... That's what I didn't understand either. I, I would think because we're not like this. You weren't created from me. But this was a one-time only thing where the woman was created from the man. Maybe. After that, they reproduced and they, they did it they did it differently. Okay. Okay, and then something else here. It says it took his thir his rib, the 13th rib. Now, Eli, you look up how many ribs are. I didn't. I think you oh, did. Who was it? Look this up. Okay. Yeah, I did. Uh, there's 12 ribs on each side. Man and woman both have the same, I guess. Women have 10% smaller ribs. Even if they're the same height, their ribs are 10 But smaller. some people have 13, 13 ribs and some people have 11 ribs. Okay, so that's very interesting because um, the 13th, we, if we all had 12 ribs with the 13th rib, if we all had 13 ribs to begin with, and then he took, it says he took the, the rib on the right side, though, which, is, which I find fascinating. Did he ha do we have an extra rib on the right side? Um, I, I do not know. Okay. All right, so uh, where am I at here? Let's see. And it brought her it's right this. after again. This again. Time again. This is so hard to find. All oh, right here. It's woman thus. Right here, thus. Uh, that is fit to call woman. Thus, uh, okay. Thus because she is created from me, she is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. This is fit to call woman because from man she was taken. Therefore a man shall leave and be separate from the house of the bed of his father and of his mother and shall cons conciliate with his wife and both of them shall be one flesh. And both of them were wise Adam and his wife, but they were not faithful or truthful in their glory. Therefore, a man shall leave the house of the bed of his father and his mother, and they knew not what is shame. Okay, anyone have any ideas what it means they are not faithful or in their or truthful in their glory? I think they don't understand uh, who they really are. They don't understand what good is. They're kind of like children. They don't know anything. Yeah. They're just innocent. Right. All right. Well, that is it, everybody. That is the end of our time that is the end of this thing if uh when it was talking about adam yeah or, and said again mm -hmm. the grand says maybe that's prophecy of birth prophecy of birth yeah I, it, absolutely i mean that, that's what it is i mean it, it ever since that that was the only time that we knew of that a woman was made from a a man um and these are some very interesting details that we have right here so guys as a tribe as a forum is that so far with what we've read from the Targum, is this good or is this bad? Kate? I think it's good so far. It's better so far, than, so it's honestly Jade? going better than what we've seen in some of the books of Paul. Yeah, well, yeah, it definitely. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, it, it Paul's books go against the Torah, and that's what we want to be educated in. And, and um, one gal that did respond on this, she said these were really good books, but there are some um, Judaism stuff in there. And just so everybody knows, you're not going to want to be a Jew. You do not want to partake in man-made religion. Judaism is a man-made religion. It is not a it is not a doctrine, it is not a religion of our creator. It is a it is taken from 25 other additional books that they call the Talmud, and inside of the Talmud there's very evil stuff. And we are when we are protecting, we're supposed to guard when there's 53 times in the Torah that it tells us to guard the laws of our creator. He's not joking. We absolutely must be on guard. We must absolutely not take away. We must absolutely not add to the word. And we must get this finited. We must get this dialed in. So I would agree so far, this is a very good um, reading. Um, we've learned quite a bit more, a lot of stuff. It, it does give us a lot more questions than possibly answers. But the next chapter gets really interesting. And so um, hopefully by next Shabbat, we are going to go over another couple chapters and hopefully the, the bottom reading will be dialed in because we will have our handy dandy scanner and the handy dandy scanner is going to actually be, um, this should actually be like a regular print instead of this, this really funky looking stuff right here. So I guess that is it. Does anyone else have anything else out there?
Nobody no. wants us to stop. Everybody wants you to keep going. I <laughs> would. You know, I would if we had Genesis 3, but we don't have Genesis 3 right here. And so um, I guess this is what is going to be. So everybody out there, our family out there, our little Ecclesia, we love you guys tremendously. We thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. Um, this would not be the same kind of Ecclesia if it wasn't with you guys. And again, we're not teachers. We're not doing anything. We're just a family that's just reading this and we're seeking the ways of our creator. And we're, you know, we're hoping and begging and, and uh, you know, our goal is that everybody out there will find this joy, will find the true honey in the Torah and understand the appreciation of the Torah. And the Torah is there to keep us alive. It's there to govern our lives and it's there to make everything much better. So thank you guys so much. We love you guys very much. We will end it with a song. I don't know which song. I'm just going to hit one and then we will call it good. Much love. All right. So
Shabbat shalom, everyone. We love you. Shalom. Shalom.